And somewhere for me, in the very idea of the story, there is something to do with shelter. But then, inside the story, there's another kind of shelter. Storytelling is much more diversified. Stories mediated through images. But it doesn't tell us very much about what stories have become. Yes, I agree. Something of that primitive origin doesn't remain. But John, don't you think that people make a distinction between a story that is true and a story that is imagined or invented? Tell me the real story. Mm -hmm. But we also think of stories as, that's only a story. The story exists somewhere. I started inventing, but in relation to the truth. And why will it be fiction? Because it will exist both everywhere and nowhere. But why would it be read as taking place everywhere and nowhere? Don't you situate it in the village where you live? The, it's immediate time or it's immediate place. And it's exactly that which makes it fiction. I don't have that experience, I think. I don't think stories are necessarily universal. The most powerful form of, of storytelling is very compact. I think I have maybe another way of looking at it from you because I really uh, start not from the oral tradition. The reason you wanted to tell the story is that you were moved by him. Isn't that behind your, your attitude towards storytelling? Perhaps it's less sociological. But that is certainly one model of storytelling. Uh, they, they, they are stories generally of a disaster. Uh, but why? I think what people want to travel outside themselves. The imagination runs riot. Well, I'm inventing, and I might use something from my own life. And I think of fiction, moral science fiction even. It seems to me every story has its own subjectivity. And the story, uh, there is already a kind of cooperation between these three. It's very strange to me what you're saying. Of course, I think if I write a story, it will be read. I wouldn't write if I didn't think that, that I could be read. And who were you? You were yourself? You were the person telling you the story? Once people began to write stories, they told different kinds of stories. They're things you want to tell in a written form which you couldn't tell in an oral form. I'm very interested in telling several stories at the same time, something that I learned not only from literature, but more obviously from movie. Yes. Movies from yes. cutting in movies, cutting yes. back from one shot to another. That's the kind of thing that you can't do uh, orally. It's a bit like editing a film. What happens between the sentences? You have a cut. You have a cut about the reader's reactions. That but, it, but isn't it just that you can't say everything? We, lo we look for the angular or the eccentric detail. All fiction is a fight against the absurd. Is that your beginning? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but in a dream, there is nothing which does not have a signification. And I'm not talking now about psychoanalytical explanations afterwards. There is nothing which is meaningless. Uh, not necessarily an explicit one, but an implicit one. I don't think that every event in a, in a dream has meaning. I think you can, you can impute meaning to it, you can assign meaning to it. I'm not talking about the interpretation of the dream afterwards. Well, here we have a real disagreement, because I think that the dream, and, and I'm surprised I'm taking this position, I would think you would take it, the dream is the telling of the dream. I don't think the dream exists, or as soon as it exists, it doesn't exist. Because a story should have some quality of inevitability or necessity. And perhaps it's that that we then say gives it some essential quality. No, I, I mean, I, I think we differ. Well, of the uh, absurd? Uh, against the absurd, against that endless, terrifying space in which we live. Uh, uh, I mean, let's go back for a why? moment. Why? I don't understand that. Uh, why? why? Uh, in being related, and the word is interesting, related, it becomes coherent. It is given form. Well, now now, I it wasn't a literary compliment, that. That's the important thing. Now I, I mean, know why, you're, why you think of audience in a way that I don't. I, I'm not telling a story that people will immediately recognize as part of their experience. There is an, an, another kind of, of, of storytelling, which I think is, uh, is freer of that kind of ethical responsibility. I think, for instance, one could reverse what you're saying and say not that the story redeems reality, as if reality has no meaning, but the storyteller gives it meaning. Because they suggest the absurd. No, because no? they deprive us or cut us off from the life of the mind and the life of the imagination. I don't think that stories necessarily have meaning. In fact, I don't even know what that, what, what that means. 
uh, she eloped with it when she went with I don't think it was the story that interested me it was being carried away by a character we, here we really differ being the end of the story which is actually where the story begins the end of a certain part of life well I was uh, thinking of Shakespeare actually if you could say that generally the comedies end in marriages and the tragedies end in deaths another kind of life a life becomes uh, readable and therefore recountable He's a kind of secretary of death. He's death's secretary. Uh, and there is a counter movement in time, because life goes on uh, in one direction. But do you really think uh, that a life is only intelligible when it's over? Full meaning is only apparent. Uh, it's intelligible, it's understandable before. But then you are saying that the central thing about storytelling is to tell a life, and if the maximal understanding of a life only comes after death, then the basic model of storytelling for you, of narration for you, is telling the story of a life. And that, that's, you see, where, where, where I, I don't agree. But I think it's true in a less literal way than, than, than you are suggesting, whose central strength is the depiction of character. I mean, there's an awful lot of modern uh, storytelling in which action is relatively immobilized. It's not in the and then, and then, and then form. And I think this is a great uh, uh, achievement. Um, I think we've, we've enormously expanded the resources of storytelling. And I'm not arguing. I mean, I'm arguing from the point of view of, uh, well, my own point of view, as how I... I'm arguing from my point of view, too. I, no, but I, I mean, I think there are many other forms of storytelling. Uh, I have the feeling that mine is somewhere at the heart of the matter, but there are other forms. I think that as soon as a story is uh, printed, it... This is very important. The storyteller is both at the centre, intimate, and at a distance, on the horizon not by crude statements uh, of, uh, of, uh, of comparison or historical argument or political argument. It's a very, very, very subtle process. I don't see that the world is full of stories in that sense. I mean, I think the story starts with the writer. The two activities are not very different. Huh. I, something which I feel which is almost by definition unsayable, which exists there, or a bit like a melody of music, a bit like a pattern of colors, and it's not very different. Mm. Well, it's not the same for me. Uh, when I write essays and when I write stories, it's, it seems to me an entirely different activity. I have to uh, sort of take my head off and put another head on in order to do this. Uh, we all feel inarticulate, but we also are, John, let's face it, also very verbal people. We don't talk as well as we write. I don't have this... Um, uh, model of truth-telling or of, of chronicling which seems to underlie everything that you said about writing fiction or about storytelling. I think that when I write an essay I am certainly, uh, the, the motive for an essay is certainly something that I perceive or think about or it's a set of problems which generates another set of problems and another and another and another and then I find a pretext but when I'm writing an essay I am asking myself all the time, is it true what I'm, I'm saying? <laughs> There's always a sense of responsibility, because I think both you and I are the kind of people who feel and take on responsibilities with great avidity, but it isn't, it isn't to some idea of the truth. When I, when I move to write a story, it's not because I've heard a story, because I've heard, like everyone else, thousands of stories. It's because um, I hear language in my head. I hear a sentence. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, and I, I hear a voice. Uh, and you go on hearing that voice? Yes. The so voice. It's, it's like a dictation. A dictation which then I can revise many times. It isn't exactly dictation. It's more like induction. Given the fact that I now have four lines mm -hmm. on the page, what can I make of this? For me, it's absolutely a process of invention and one intimately connected with language, with tone, with voice. Because maybe we arrive at something quite similar, but it is the reverse process. I mean, for me, uh, there's never that voice at the beginning. There is the enormous difficulty of seeing uh, that situation, that person, uh, of I following don't, I them. don't see, I hear. 
No, I see. That's perhaps why I, I like to make movies, because I don't see. Uh, 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 I only hear when I write, and therefore uh, I want very much to see. And that I, I, I like to do with, with images. Which is probably in the real time of writing, somewhere around about two-thirds. Not necessarily two-thirds of the text, but two-thirds mm -hmm. of the writing time, the months or the years. Then, suddenly, the voices come. No, the, for me, the people come out of the language. The la I feel... And for me, the, the language comes out of the people. I think it's very clear from our conversation that I'm, I'm really uh, loyal to certain modernist assumptions about art, about literature, which I think you w were, have, have come to question. And but I haven't you changed, John? Haven't you yourself changed? I don't know. Uh, I've had to relearn to write. But are you, do you constitute yourself as a reporter of your experience? I don't feel that I'm no. reporting on my experience no. at all. In general, today, there is a kind of failure of nerve uh, in fiction. What do I mean by that? I mean that... Uh, yes, uh, what do you mean by that? How do you have the right to write about peasants? You're not a peasant. How do you have the right to write about... Uh, uh, for you to write about men? You're not a man, or vice versa. It is not possible to write about what one has not lived, or of what one has not seen. But I don't believe you that. You think that's why there's so many novels about professors, and because yes, professors Yes, of course, are of course. But don't you think this also has to do with the competition of other modes of storytelling? But after all, we have storytelling through, through movies. Yes, instance, but there's always a story behind them. A limitation of ambitions, let's say, among mm. most fiction writers. Movies are about lots of different things. Yes are about more different things, perhaps, than, I'm talking about serious movies, or movies we admire, or we like, than, than uh, uh, fiction is. Written fiction has, proportionally, a smaller audience. And I, th I, think, I think something different. I mean, I think that the novelist is uh, somebody who says, come, and I'm going to show you what is happening inside that private house. And it is, f finally, the novel, which is a very small period, of the millennia of storytelling is about the private and the privileged. Oh, I couldn't disagree with you more. I mean, first of all, we have all the, all the tradition of 19th century novel writing. It was important it. then, very important. But I think it's important now. I mean, human nature hasn't changed. No, but the capacity of choices have, has changed. I don't believe that people have fewer choices now. I think in many senses they have much larger choices. One could say that their sense of choice has been devalued precisely by being so expanded. John, we're going to go on talking about this for many years, I'm sure, but now, alas, we have to stop. Good night.